Hey, what's going on guys? So first thing I want to mention is that I've had this bike now for a few months and the main part of this video that I recorded was a while back. You'll see that here in a little bit, but I haven't released a video yet because for a while the bike was out of stock and then I was trying to figure out how to unlock the max speed because they say this bike goes about 31 miles per hour. However, I could not get the bike to go that speed. You'll see how fast I can get it up to in the video, which is still pretty quick but I've been trying to figure out how to unlock it. I can't figure it out. I even followed their directions on their Amazon page. They have a little video on there and it didn't work. So if you guys have this bike and have figured out how to unlock the max speed of 31 to 32 miles per hour, please let me know. And I will update down below in the description if I figure out a way or down in the comments. So make sure you guys check that out. And if you guys have any questions, please ask them down below or just leave a comment in general because it really helps my channel out. And with that being said, guys, this bike is pretty powerful. When I put it into the highest power mode, you can go in the menu and adjust that. I was basically trying to see what it can do and I could pull a wheelie pretty easily on it. I can't keep it up in the air, but I could pull it up pretty easy. And I said to my son, I said, hey, watch this. And you guys know how that goes. It never goes well when you say watch this and it didn't. The pedal assist kicked in. I was expecting to just use the throttle, but I must have spun the pedals too far. Pedal assist kick in, the bike flew back i landed on my back i had my couple thousand dollar dslr camera on my side landed on that thank god nothing got broke on there and the bike landed on top of me so just ride safe guys be safe make sure you guys wear your uh, proper gear and don't do nothing stupid like i did but let's get into the main part of the video guys and like i said if you have any questions below please uh leave them down below and i'll try to get to them i'll put down below too in a description uh coupon i believe it's for maybe five percent off if you guys are interested in picking one of these up if you think it's right for you after watching this video so let's get into it guys what's going on everyone so today we're going to be testing out a four inch fat tire folding e-bike by tesco this thing has a 1000 watt motor on it so we're going to be testing that out today going up some hills testing out the different speeds in the pas levels testing out the suspension and showing you guys all about this bike in detail and what you can adjust and what you can't any good any bad and hopefully this helps you guys in deciding what's right for you if you're looking into purchasing an e-bike and if you are i will leave a link down in the description with a coupon code if i can get one they were supposed to give me a coupon code i didn't get it yet but i'll leave all the details down below in the description if you do use that link i will make a small commission uh, this bike is available on amazon and at current as of currently it is and I believe on their website as well. One thing I wanted to mention guys is they did send me this bike for testing and review, but that is not gonna interfere with me putting this thing through the test today and seeing what it can do. So let's get into it guys. Let me go back down to PAS1 here. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that I do have this thing turned up to the max speed it's on the max amperage for this testing and one thing i noticed it's really hard to see this display with polar ass sunglasses on but this display is actually really pretty awesome super bright green colors i'll show you guys here in a little bit but pas1 looks like 8.5 miles per hour on the display and about 7.5 miles per hour on gps so the bike is reading slightly high but that's a really good speed for pas1 and another thing I wanted to mention is you can go in and control how many PAS levels you have. You could go from, I believe, zero to three all the way up to zero to nine. So you could have nine different PAS levels if you want. I have mine currently set on five levels of assist because that's normally what I prefer. And like I said, you can go in and adjust each level to whatever you want. I actually toned down one and two because I believe one was set at 50% and two was set at 60. So I went in and turned those down, I believe 30% for one and 40% for two. But like I said, I may not go through all the levels because you could go in and change them to whatever you want. So just keep that in mind, guys. Really nice adjustability there on the PAS levels. And one thing I'm really excited to show you guys is the brakes on this thing. If you've seen my Instagram photo, the brakes the rotors on this thing are super thick. They're at least two times, maybe even over two times as thick as a standard rotor. This thing also has hydraulic brakes, really easy adjustability that I'll show you. I've never seen uh, adjustable brakes like this that, that are that easy, but you can hear here, 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 
yeah i think i said that right that going down that hill no squeaks no squeals barely pulling the back brake one-handed here and slows me down perfectly so very very nice braking system on this bike so to activate cruise control on this i believe you just hold the throttle down steady for about eight seconds and it activates so we're going to see here i don't i didn't see anything on the display that pops up to tell you when cruise control is enabled that would have been nice to see something pop up to tell you that it was enabled but i don't see anything like that all right throttle was off let's see if i am in cruise control i believe i am because i believe this is slightly uphill Uh, yeah, I believe it's in cruise control. Nothing on the display telling me it's in cruise control. So let's go into PAS2 here. And I'm hoping there's a way to change this, but I don't believe there is. But I'm cruising pretty good, guys. I don't know if, if that's just because I was going downhill, but I'm not even pedaling or throttle or anything. Let's see if cruise control is actually on. I don't think so. Now, nah, maybe this bike just drifts that good. So, like I said, one thing I want to mention is throttle does work in all your PAS levels one through five. However, throttle is limited to whatever PAS level you're in. So right now I'm in PAS level one and you're only going to get the throttle of PAS level one. It does not work in PAS zero. So for max throttle to work, you have to be in PAS five for you to have maximum throttle. I hate when companies do that and you can't change it because I want full throttle no matter what PAS level I'm in. If I'm in PAS 1 pedaling slow and I want to hit that throttle and take off, I like it to be there. And this one, it limits you to whatever level you're in. Like I said, I, w I, d I messed around in the settings, didn't see a way to change that. I emailed the company to see if there was a way. If I end up being able to figure a way out, I will put it down in the comments of this video or down in the description. So PAS2, I believe I have it set for 40%. We'll check on that later, but it looks like that's right around 10 to 11 miles per hour here on level ground. So that's pretty nice level for PAS2. And like I said, guys, I'm not gonna go through every single level because you can adjust them, but we are gonna bump it up into five and see what we can get for the max speed on five little bit slightly uphill so this is level five throttle only guys let's see what we can do 24 25 and it says 27 on the 28 on the uh, odometer on the bike so that's slightly reading a little high right now i'm going 22 up this little hill so yeah guys, it's definitely faster than 20 mile an hour with just throttle only. We'll try to test it out further uh, once I get up onto a longer straight stretch with no hills to keep it fair. But I'll see you guys on the next hill. All right guys, so we're gonna head up this long hill here. We're gonna see how it does going up the hill. Try to show you guys here the display and the speed. But this bike seems like it has a lot of power guys. Pretty torquey. And I'm in gear six and PAS five and I'm at about 16 miles per hour on GPS 17 on the display but it's walking me right up this hill no problem at all guys I'm barely pedaling barely putting any effort in I got to shift up here, guys. It's going to start leveling off. There we go. And another nice thing about this bike is it uses a 12 to 32 cassette in the rear. And it's really set up nice for maintaining pressure on the pedals when you're going fast. I mean, right here, 27 on the display. 24.5 on the GPS. So 25.5. So easily 
I almost don't feel like my GPS is that accurate though. Maybe I don't have a really good signal. It's showing 27 to 28 on the display. So I'll have to try a different speed app on the next long straight stretch. But guys, power wise, this thing's pretty nice. No problem at all up this hill. And I'm in eighth gear right now. Hey guys, check this torque out. This, this is crazy, PAS5. I could pull Willy on this bike so easily in PAS5, that's crazy. I can't do a Willy on any of my other e-bikes. This is a slight incline, but I wouldn't doubt that it would do that on level ground as well. I'm at throttle only. We're going to see what this bike can do. 25. Slight uphill. Slight downhill. And I just felt the motor cut. So the display says 32. I'm gonna see where it kicks back in at. I think it cut it around 28 to 29. Now it's, it's kicked it back in now, so at least 29. So yeah, guys, level ground, this bike should at least do around 29 miles per hour, throttle only. some level ground coming up here 25 26 27 yeah I would say I'm gonna go ahead and pedal now guys but I'm gonna say really easy to maintain around 25 to 28 miles per hour throttle only I think they advertise on their website 32 miles per hour, but I, I think that's a little bit unrealistic unless you're a little bit downhill. And I believe they rated it at a rider of like 135 pounds or something. I'm 160 to 165. But overall, oh guys, this thing's maintaining a pretty good speed. I'm in the highest gear right now. PAS5, pedal assist, 26. on cruise control guys so let's see if all right, I pulled the brake and it disabled it and guys I don't know what's going on with the battery level meter but it still shows 100% it was down to I believe 91 earlier when I had a load on it but there's no way that it's still at 100% with me being seven miles into the trip going up all those hills and everything so I'm not sure if you could go in and adjust how it reads your percentages to different voltage like you can with some other bikes or not i'll have to look into that but we'll see what it says further along on this trip so this should be a pretty straight flat stretch so let's test out throttle only now right around 25 26 miles an hour let's go in and see if we can adjust anything I want to make sure everything's turned up all the way but look at this display guys that display is sweet it's really bright really awesome but there's no way that that should be at 100% not with me being 7.4 miles into the trip let's see where we're at on the relive app 6.6 .6 miles, 7.4, so it is reading a little high on the display of the bike. GPS is saying we went 6.6 .6 miles so far. So let's go into the settings here. You hold the plus and minus button down. That brings you to the display settings there. Um, I don't see anything there that would help. Let's go back one, go down to advanced settings. Let's see, speed limit. 
that's odd. I know I said it to 26 before. Huh. I don't know if it goes back to 25 by itself or what. 25, that's all the way up. And one thing I want to mention, guys, is I played around with the amp rating on here. I took it all the way down to, I believe, 7 amps and went up a hill. It did not make a difference at all, which makes me believe they have this locked at a certain amperage. Now, whether or not that's locked at 25 amps or 22 amps, I couldn't tell you guys. I pulled the controller out. There was no rating on the controller. All I could tell you is it is getting pretty good power. Don't want to mess with those. Yeah, so I don't see anywhere other than slow start, which I believe I have it set on the slowest start, and it's still pretty torquey. Um, power set, that's where you can go and change your PAS levels, and you could adjust the level of each PAS level. So you can see there I have it set for 30, 40, 60, 80, 100. So that's what I thought it was at. So we're not going to mess with those. Um, so it is turned up for the max speed at PAS5. So we'll back out of here. Real quickly, guys, I went back into the settings, and sure enough, for some reason, no, if you set this at 26 miles per hour for max speed, it automatically goes back down to 25 for some reason. You could set it lower than 25 and it stays lower, but it does not stay at 26. So that's very odd. And another thing I want to mention is I played around with this earlier the other day. And if you set it to 10 miles per hour max, I believe it still lets you get to like 20. So that's not exactly accurate for the speed limit. So that's, I w they need to do some work on that for sure. They need to actually make it so whatever you set your max speed to, it actually goes to. Off-road through the hayfield. All right, guys, so you can see there, man, this bike has tons of power as well. Now, after further testing on my ride to here, I was able to do throttle only some more, pedal assist only some more. They are about the same as far as max speed goes, and I do believe it's limited to 25 miles per hour. I was able to hit 26, 27 going down slight uh, hills, like a, a downgrade, but on level ground, I believe it is capped at 25 miles per hour, so there estimated uh, max range on their website that states I believe 32 is definitely inaccurate. So now let's go over some of the specs and features about this bike here. Now this thing, first of all, this frame is massive on this thing. It's, it's pretty big. Down through here is really big, but overall all the welds are really nice and you, you really can't see any welds on the whole bike. It's really just really finished really well. You can't even tell where it was welded together. One thing I don't like is this plug's very, very hard to get in. I believe the hole's almost too small. I have to use like a screwdriver to push it in on one side once I get it started. The good thing about that is it will be pretty water sealed once it's in, but it is hard to get in and out. The rack on the back here is really heavy duty, really nice rack. It is a steel rack, it's not aluminum. It would have been nice to be aluminum to uh, limit the weight a little bit. Seats, fairly comfortable. I think a suspension seat post is definitely in the future for this because uh, it is a little bit bumpy. Now the front, that's one thing I want to talk about because this thing has some pretty nice suspension here. This lockout on this side, it has clicks on it just like some of my other bikes and then it locks out. So you have adjustability here too. See the positive and negative? Usually when you see that and not just a lock and unlock, you do have adjustability there as far as how much compression or dampening that has now on the other side you do have a preload adjuster there so that's nice nice headlight up front it looks like it has a halo but it does not light up around here it's just the center here uh, we'll test it out later another really nice feature about this bike is the way that this stem latch locks i've never seen a latch like this but it's really really secure and heavy duty this is a little odd here the way this is but as you can see when you unlatch this it actually releases something in this side so it actually pulls that through and clamps that on this side when it latches which is 
really nice in my opinion, easy to adjust too. You just tighten up this Allen screw if you need to make it tighter, but that makes it really secure. And then don't forget to latch this for safety. Now let's go over some other features that I was really impressed with on this bike when I first unboxed it. If you guys seen my Instagram photo, the one thing I showed was these rotors. I mean, look at these things. They are pretty thick. I don't know if you guys could see that there, but they're at least twice as thick as a standard rotor. And that's gonna prevent them from warping if they get hot. Um, probably a little bit better heat dissipation maybe, being thick like that. And I don't know if that's because of the type of hydraulic braking system that they use. It's called Disland, almost looks like Disneyland. Uh, but the brakes work really well on this thing. I did have a little bit of troubles getting the back adjusted initially because I don't know if it was slightly warped or what on the rotor, but I kept hearing a tinging sound. But after a little bit of playing around, uh, adjusting it to the center, I got it perfect riding down the road, no noises whatsoever. But you can see here the hydraulic brakes up top. Disland, this little screw right here adjusts your pull on them. So really easy to adjust if you want them to, you know, start braking here or if you want them to start braking further back here. Or if your pads wear down, all you can do is tighten the screw up a little bit and it pretty much adjusts your brakes. So you don't have to do any adjustments down there at your wheels until your brake pads basically wear all the way down and then you change them and then you might have to do some more adjustments. But all the adjustments you will make after you initially get it set up will just be right here in the brake lever. So you just spin this screw in or out. I've never had something that easy to adjust before. Normally there is an adjustment screw in there, but you have to use a wrench normally to adjust it. So that's pretty nice that they give you those big screws like that to adjust. Over here on the right hand side, you have your eight speed Shimano uh, trigger shifter, really nice trigger shifter there. On the left side, you have the thumb throttle, obviously because you have a trigger shifter on this side. You have your control panel, just like on some of my other bikes, plus and down for your pedal assist, headlight, info, on and off. And then I already showed you guys the display on which you can go in there and adjust, but really nice intuitive display. One thing I didn't mention is it does show you your wattage here below your speed. I don't know if you guys can see that. It might be too bright out here, but it goes up to 999 watts. That's the max that it reads. So this bike might be peaking out higher than the 999 watts. I don't know that. It does say that it's maxed at 1,000 watts on their website. Maybe it's peaking out over that. I don't know, but it does seem like it has a lot of power on this bike. Battery is inside the frame here. Uh, fits really good. One thing I did do was put some felt pads underneath in the front and the back just to keep that in there tighter because I did hear a little bit of rattling when I was hitting some bumps. So I put some felt pads on there. Like I said, I took the controller out, couldn't tell an amperage on it. I'll throw a picture of it up here to show you guys uh, basically what the controller looks like. Now, one other thing I did not like, and I noticed right off the bat my first test ride, was when I was pedaling, the back of my heels was hitting this wire because this motor connector their wire is kind of like on the outside of the frame here. And uh, it was kind of sticking out. I'd cut the zip tie off, tried to move it down underneath that and put this shifting cable up in the actual groove. That helped out a little bit, but one thing you can do is you can get a spacer for your pedals and put them on your cranks first to get your pedal out some if it was bothering you. Honestly, on this ride, I didn't even notice it. It didn't bother me at all so far today, but just something to keep in mind, if you hit that a lot with your rear of your foot that might get loose or come unplugged, you might wanna think about getting extensions on your cranks to bring your pedals out a little bit further. Coming down that eight speed Shimano shifter, you have a 12 to 32 tooth cassette. This is not a free wheel. It is a cassette, which I believe is a little better in my opinion. You have a Shimano Altus derailleur, which is a step up from uh, entry level, which is really nice. Uh, you have the chain ring in the front with a metal cover on the outside. Now there's no cover on the inside to keep your chain from popping off there, but I haven't had any issues with it. That is nice that they put one on the outside to keep your pants nice and clean. Um, little channel down in the frame. Not sure how I, I like the look of this design here, but I thought that was pretty cool to be able to put like a small bike alarm or something in there. I, there's little bike alarms that I use. I'll put down in this, the description. They're pretty nice, about 18 bucks. Uh, good place for that. Maybe a good spot to hide an air tag in there or something. 
Cable management, pretty nice up here. Wrapped pretty good. They didn't go all the way down with the wrapping. Um, would have been nice if everybody just used one piece all the way up that, but you could get this stuff fairly reasonable and finish it off if you want, but pretty nice all together, really good. They do give you a bell, but for some reason, I think this one's a little bit messed up because it doesn't really sound too good. Faux leather hand grips, pretty comfortable. Now, if your palms get sweaty, you might have a problem holding on to there. They might slip around, but they do have double locks really tight on there, so that's nice. And the bike does include a set of rear and front fenders however they are plastic and they do seem a little bit short so i'm not quite sure how good they're going to work in a rainy environment as far as preventing mud from coming up over the back i felt like this should have been down just slightly further and maybe down a little further in the front so i believe that's most of the main things about the bike guys we're going to hop on it do some more riding and when i get back we'll see how far i went what kind of battery level i have left right now to stop it's showing 95 percent as i'm riding it's getting down to below 80 so that's one thing that I think they might have to work on as well is the battery level meter. It doesn't quite read right all the time, uh, but we're gonna go ahead, take a ride down there, maybe up over onto that other hill there, because my stepdad was up there doing something with some hay, so or cutting or something. So we're gonna go ahead and take a ride up there and see you guys in a few minutes. Stop to see what he was doing and he's putting me to work. <laughs> Gotta pull the tractor to get it jump started. The life of a farmer. <laughs> Ready? Where's my jump packs when I need them? longer than I thought. All right guys, testing out the suspension here. Pretty nice. A little hard to do one-handed. All right guys, so now we're on a pretty steep hill. The steepest hill that I know of in my town. It's 14 degree grade, a little bit further up here. So we're gonna check it out and see how good this bike goes uphill. Uh, I'm gonna just use throttle only for a while until I feel like I need to start pedaling. Wow guys, so far, pretty impressive. I'm going to start helping it out here. It's still going pretty good though. This is 14 degree. Start pedaling here. This is in first gear, PAS5. And right up it guys, not a problem. And that's after a 15 mile ride. So really impressive with the power that this bike has. So no issues at all. Definitely, definitely the power of my 750 watt bikes for sure. So there's no questions at all there that it is at least 750 to 1000 watts. All right guys, the last long hill before my house. Pedal assist five and gear eight. So we're gonna see if this thing will pull me up this long hill and I'm gonna stay in gear eight, giving it minimal effort. And with the load on it now going up this hill, it's saying that I'm down to 40, 
8% battery. So when I stop, it goes up to around 70. So that battery level meter is definitely a little bit hard to tell where your battery is exactly at on this bike. I think when I get back to the house, I'm gonna take it off and check it with a voltmeter to see how many volts it is. Because a 48 volt battery should be right around half, somewhere around 48 to 49 volts. So no problem guys, right up it. Barely putting in any effort. All right guys, one last hill test on this very, very steep grassy hill here. This is after 16.7 miles of riding. We're gonna see if we can walk up that hill. Battery's showing 74%, that's without any load on it, but it does drop to around 40 some, I believe. We'll see what it drops to coming up this hill. Right up it, not a problem. It actually dropped to around 60 some percent, I believe. So yeah, guys, lots of power. All right, guys, so I'm back to my house. I checked the voltage of the battery and it's at 46.5 volts. You can see I tested it with a voltmeter here. And 46 volts, according to this chart, for a 48 volt battery is about 45%. So the display is definitely wrong. One thing I did notice is you can go in and change that. So I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, go back into the display settings by holding the plus and negative. Go down to advanced settings. Then you go down to where it says 48 volts. Click on that and you can see here, it shows you your different voltages from 40 to 49 volts. 49 volts it's saying is 100%. That's why it took so long for it to come down. I noticed if you just change that number, it will make it a lot more accurate. Another thing I noticed too that's really weird, you can only go up so high. So I can only go up to 50 there, but if you back out of there, you can see it'll drop down a little bit just by adding that extra one volt. I'm going to go back into there again and I'm going to keep doing that until I get it up to 54.6 or at least the highest that I can get it. So we'll see what we can get it to. But that's really odd that you can only go up one volt at a time. All right, so now we're at 54.6. We're going to exit out of here and that battery level should drop down to about 45% or so. Perfect, 45%. So now the battery should be a lot more accurate. All right guys, so there's my test of the Tesco Strength, I believe they call it. I hope you guys found it enjoyable. There is one other thing that I forgot to mention and that is that there actually is a USB port behind the display on a little wire here that you could charge your phone and devices from. So that's really cool. A um, couple other things that I've noticed on this trip, I went in and disabled the cruise control because I didn't really want to, I hardly ever use cruise control, but for some reason it's not disabling it. So. I'm in cruise control right now, guys, and I have it turned off into display. I'm not pedaling, not hitting the throttle, and it is still going. So not sure why it's still activated, but they're going to have to hopefully fix that in the future. So yeah, guys, overall, I would say the max speed on this bike is 25 miles per hour. They do state 32 on Amazon, so I'm going to see if they could take that off of there because that's not accurate. And I will put down below in the description, like I said, a link to this bike for both Amazon and their website. And I will try to get a coupon code for you guys and I'll leave that down below too. So if you guys are interested, make sure you guys check that out. But overall, it does have a little 
quirks here and there that hopefully they address in the future but overall guys it's a great bike i'm very very happy with the brakes on this bike the rotors on it and so far the speed and the range of it has been pretty good in my opinion it would have been nice to see a few more miles per hour out of it to hit at least 28 29 but what's nice is even though it's 25 miles an hour there's enough power to maintain in the 20 mile an hour range even when you're hitting small hills and things like that so really nice guys right now it's showing i went 17.3 miles on this trip 19.4 on the odometer so in a 17 mile trip it was about two miles off registering two extra miles on the display and also the mile per hour on the display like i said is around two miles per hour higher than gps so that makes sense that's all i have for you guys on this one please make sure you guys are subscribed check out my instagram join me on there and i will see you guys around on the next one thanks for watching everyone please leave a comment it really helps me out